where to start where to start um i do my i do my freelance business for over 20 years and for the last 10 years uh we changed a little bit of it which is the the part where we don't stay at home or we don't stay in the office and we started with uh, with uh, the caravan first the uh, uh, trailer that we put behind our car and then we upgrade it and then we upgrade it further uh, so the those last 10 years really were a big change to what we what we did before and i'm super happy of basically everything that happened throughout those uh, those 10 years because it was amazing experiences and and great people and it really like teleported me uh much further in the in in the freelance kind of things also in the perception of life and values of life and and things like that so so this is basically the the history of those 10 years uh, on the map and and that's where we travel or those those spots on the map are where we slept with either the caravan or or the trailer so to 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 make my story shorter because i later have some some more things really to just the, the camper stuff uh, this is my history like my parents uh, started in 1990 after a velvet revolution in czech republic to to do their own business so i was growing up in in a family that were building their own their own business and and so i followed the lead on the other hand i i am not uh, able to to take over the binary and i'm not really familiar with all the nature stuff and and the, the 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 weather stuff and those kind of things so i kind of escaped and ran away to computers and it maybe was my parents fault because they bought the first computer for our family so then i spent a few hours there and then i spent few days few months few years and then then here we are i'm i'm the computer guy and not the binary art guy so that's how it started and and since then it was like uh, as probably everyone i started with side gigs and little things along the way and then uh, i had my first freelance license and since then i was basically bouncing between 100 fre freelance and some kind of like entrepreneurship or limited company or partnering with somebody to do do things so that happened multiple times throughout the, the career all all the time i was basically a designer but i dipped my toes a lot into the business side of things and i was kind of required to learn all those like management things and 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 all those nice challenges along the way so so I, I would say I'm a, I'm still a designer. I would be perceived as a product guy or designer, and and uh, there is also a lot of things uh, related to just business or to strategy and 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 those things. So so that's that's my business side of things. And then the the personal side of things is was growing much faster and much better than than I would ever thought if you asked me 20 years ago. So we started with a little freelance business. Uh, uh, then I found my now wife uh, and, and we do things together. And then suddenly kids came in and from the travels that we did before, like get your backpack, uh, jump in a car and go to Paris or Rome or somewhere uh, throughout Europe, which was a matter of decision within five minutes and then packing up in, in 15 minutes. Now with the kids it, it it changed a little bit so so we realized that okay with with the kids to to do this do the travels as i like it to be one night there two nights there three nights uh, somewhere else it was much more difficult so we were thinking a lot about it and and realized that maybe there is a way how we can combine the work the family life and and the travels together so the caravan came in the idea my wife told me you're absolutely crazy this is not going to work and and you cannot do this because we have the mortgage on the house and and uh, we don't have any money because the the the, 
the money needed for the house were uh, higher up than what we thought originally and, and all the kind of stuff that we go through in 20s or 30s of our lives. So, but anyway, I, I felt strongly about the, uh, about the idea that it might work. So I borrowed money from my friend, bought the, bought the caravan because I didn't want to, to rent it out because we might mess with it or I don't know. So I found the cheapest one in the market and bought one and, and forced my wife first forced and then, then she really liked it. So uh, uh, to, to go to Croatia for a month. And since that time, it's basically like, she loves it, I love it, uh, kids love it too. And we do it every spring and sometimes every, every fall, uh, every year since 2000, 2012. Yeah, yeah. So whew, long time ago. So, and since then we are looking to, to find a way how to make the life even better, balance it out and and enjoy it more and more and that ties to the financial stuff which i want to make sure that money comes in so we can travel so we can enjoy life and so we can raise the kids well and and maybe then invest some money into things so we don't have to work as much or we can choose to work and and maybe even later on mentoring and, and helping other people to to do the same or to do similar stuff so this is this is the the beginning, and then we can jump right away to to the remote work stuff, which is like how how much remote you you would like to go. Like most of us try to work from home. Most of us tried probably co working, which is kind of like close to your home, and that's that's kind of like the the obvious choice. And many of us, I guess, like it but it was not enough for me so we we tried that we tried hotels we tried uh, working from home for a long time but i thought okay like you can put wheels on your home and then then work from from other place too so then there is the caravan or camper kind of travel which increase the freedom uh, and increase the 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 information that you get from the travel and the, the, the culture things you find out and learn and kids learn and, and so on. So it's possibly like a great improvement of, of the combination of working remotely and, and, and enjoying life. And then I also tried a little bit uh, uh, the, the sailboat stuff, which is like the even higher level than the camper van, because that's really like you need to do a lot of stuff with the boat to to make it float and then there is the work and then a lot of other things so so we are still in the camper level but over time my target is okay like if we want to travel around the world not just europe then then sailboat would be the thing to do and there is like yeah a lot of things like technical weather all all kind of things so i tried that and and it didn't work out so easy. So that's, that's, that's the challenge for next several years to, to overcome, to, to fight with. Okay, so back to the camper stuff, which I guess from, from the Instagram pictures and, and all, the, all the videos on YouTube might feel like, okay, this is like harmony and you just you know, chat with people and, and look at Gibraltar and, and have fun with your kids which is more like sometimes is the case, but most of the time, obviously you need to do your work and you need to uh, get food and you need to uh, be ready for some limitations of travel and, and you need to prepare. So, so there definitely are downsides to it and there are, uh, there are uh, positive sides to it. So if I go first to the, to the downsides, the, the most common question is, there's not enough space. Like it's, it's a car basically. So you have like, you know, two meters by three meters or five meters. And there's, there's no way you can, you know, survive that for more than two days or so. And actually it's, it's not that bad. It's the thing is that you just use the van as your house differently. It's more like a, a hotel room where you go 
to sleep, where you go to work, maybe to cook, to hide uh, if if there's rain, uh, and to to uh, do do the required stuff. But then the the garden is your work, so that's where you want to go after the work. That's where you go after the schooling and and where you have the most fun. And and the great thing is that that many times you just you know end up in a, a location in the night because you just came in, uh, you don't see anything. And then in the morning you open up your windows and the kids uh, get up from the bed and you see a completely different uh, story there. And you just like get overwhelmed by the, by the, the surroundings and the, the nature or the sea or the mountains or wherever you are. So it is empowering. And it, this is, this is uh, one of the things that make it so great. But back to the back to the uh, negative side side of things, the the first years are definitely the critical ones uh, because like we are used to a different kind of life where sometimes we have a house and you have your room and and your partner have your room and your kids go to school or you go to work so you don't you don't really like share as much of space and time together. Uh, we definitely. Uh, had a lesson last year, uh, or everybody of us had a lesson last year to to fight with this. But uh, this is really like compact, so you you really get know of each other way more, and you you need to do compromises, and you need to learn how to communicate with your partner or your kids way more than than what we did in the house. So. And obviously, that's like the, the the psychology of things is not just the one challenge that you fight. It's like, okay, then the car broke or the internet breaks or the temperature is high. And there are like other 10, 20 things that can go wrong. And and first years, even for me, as I'm, I'm a phlegmatic and I kind of like don't, you know, jump out of... Uh, uh, to to be a crazy crazy insane like demon uh, very often, but if if three four things happen at the same time, it's really like a good challenge to to control us control yourself. So so that was that that was those first years when we had ups and downs, even with my wife or with the kids, and it was like, man, how can we handle that? And then over time, we realized that okay, like. We can handle that. Like, we if we discuss the issues, if we discuss what everybody of us wants, then we can just adjust, and every further week, month, or year would be better. So, so this really like was a challenge in the beginning, and also after after those few first years, we realized that there are the the, the positive side of things is way better or way higher than what the negative side of things is. So the, the, the most important is that compared to regular travel, you don't need to plan as much. You just like, we started with that. We, we had a precise plan of campsites where we would go. And we, I, I made sure that the reservation goes right and that they are ready for us there. And then you realize that you don't, you don't really like, need to do that, at least out of season. In the season, it might be a little trickier, but uh, out of season, most of the campsites are at 10 to 30% of, of the capacity and you always find a place to, to be. And at later stage, we find out that you don't even need to go to the campsite. There is like, you can just stay on a parking lot next to highway or you can park almost anywhere like a regular car and just sleep there for one night. So, the, the freedom of movement really like increases with with this and the, the, the freedom of like you don't have the as much stress with like okay airport we need two hours to get there taxi driver not reliable or going somewhere else or there is you know like a city full of cars and you are slower and you you cannot make it so those kind of little things are not there anymore like even if we are in a in a packed city and things take a few more hours that's like you have your house so you just end up uh, in in the destination a little later but even like if i have a call or i need to do my work you can 
stop somewhere along the way and do it there and then even sleep there or go to the destination next day, which which happens or which happened uh, multiple times. This year we've been to Spain and and as we have a cat to, with us because like we started with the kids, but over time it got easy. So so my wife thought, okay, let's let's multiply the complexity with the cat. And and so we take the cat with us and it obviously made things a little bit more crazy. So so we started with, with a leash and the cat was still like hanging on some tree with the leash and things like that. Then we met some British guys and they said like, guys, you don't need to do that. Like the cat always finds her or his way home. So like you just stop somewhere where there's no highway and, and that should be fine. So we tried that and it really worked like that. So that was, it was like, man, we don't need to do this leash unleash thing over and over again. And this year uh, we've been to a nice uh, location near near Gibraltar and and the cat left the, the van in at like 6 a.m. or something and we wanted to leave the leave the place to to meet with uh, my friend somewhere else but the cat didn't came in so it was like okay we gave him like a few hours and nothing happened so we had the van packed, but we unpacked it again and then waited a few more hours. Then, okay, he's not coming back. So we tried to walk around and and you then realize that, okay, like he might just be slow and enjoy the nature or he might be swallowed by a snake or anything could happen. So we were discussing suddenly like how much time we would give him to, to go back and at what time we would say, okay, this is enough and like, enjoy your life here in Spain and we're, we're just leaving. So we, we thought, okay, we will sleep one night here and, and see what happens. And luckily he came in at like 8 p.m. or something like that. So, so the, the, the learning from that is like, never feed your cat in the morning if you are uh, leaving the same day, because then he's like, you know, belly is full and nobody cares about like what your time schedule is. So that is really like a lot of, a lot of these like little, little situations and, and a lot of other th- stuff like the, f- the nature and, and, and the, the free spots, which are nice sometimes and uh, close to the beach and, and it's all great. So so this is this is like the basics, and then we have the the, the locations. Like Europe is one of them, and uh, the the US uh, is another one, and then you have the Australia or Africa, and then the Japan, for example. So and there are little differences. Like Americans like things big, so they usually have these like the uh, buses, and where you have like multiple rooms for everything, and and the awnings and the, the slide outs and 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 big big uh, living rooms and couches so that's that's kind of like fun but i cannot imagine traveling with that in europe because like just to go to a city might be a tricky we as we had the trailer uh, it also was like 12 meters of length so uh, i know how difficult it is to to park that thing in in, in the city or in the place where you want to go so this is the American way. I don't really share that that approach, but uh, but you might like it, and and the luxury is there for sure. Uh, so like this is this is how I think about what Americans need for for just to to go camping, and and this one even has like a flight deck for a helicopter. So maybe this is fun, but it definitely goes to the luxury side of things, but limits your ability to to travel and your agility. So. On, on the other end is Japan, like where you, where you usually have much smaller cars because the, the insurance I think is there uh, calculated based on how much space the car takes. So they usually have like the, the high uh, cars which are t- super tiny and it's basically a bed on wheels, nothing more because even this guy even has shoes outside because it cannot fit inside, you know? So uh, this is, this is the, 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 the other approach. And then you have the Australians or Africans, which like things dirty and, and, uh, and dangerous, and they like spiders and snakes, which I hate. And uh, they, they do this way of, of the things. So that's, that's fine. 
it's that's nice but uh, we Europeans are kind of like the settled down regular guys that just you know convert a van and, and go camping in in the most regular way so this is how it might look in in some of the campsites of Europe and uh, and and we enjoy it. we have a similar van uh, like this silver one and this is actually a, a shot from this year in in Spain where we met like four Czech families traveling and and we spend a nice evening the most cold evening of of the whole trip so in the end uh, uh, on this place we were like covered with blankets and several jackets and but still discussing what happened to each of us on on the travelers and how the covid regulations on the borders went and and it was it was really fun so those are the options uh, and and then you might tell yourself okay like if i want to go and and try this what should i do one of the things is renting the camper which i highly recommend because i went the other way and it was way more risky and i could mess up with things but it didn't happen but if you just want to try it and see if like you are the guy that likes to be sometimes in the mud or that that can survive the small space just you know rent it for one or two days and that would basically tell you if you are compatible with the kind of travels and, and work or you're not so then the the work the uh, the most important for me uh, because uh, in in our family i make sure that there is enough funds for all the fun and all the food and all the all the expenses that we might have and my wife renata takes care of all the emotional stuff and cares about the kids and so she doesn't she she actually hates my excel sheets uh, and i i might love them and i tried like a million times to share them with her and show them with her show, show them to her but it's like same same with me if she says like you you need to be more emotional or you need to spend more time with the family i always have the, the work there as as in my brain as the priority so we kind of pull each other to to the to the world of of the other uh, person and try to balance and and learn from each other so that's how we have it and uh the job could be like or most of most of the people i met and what i do is basically working with computer and having an internet connection as as you would have elsewhere and that's that's how uh, things can go but there are other approaches to or uh, options that you can do if you are traveling with your van one of the uh, one of the uh, common ones are uh, the the farm stuff the WWOF farms which is like you can work somewhere and uh, and get food in exchange and spend time with the locals and I know a few families that that did it and and if you are really like on low budget this is the way how you can explore and and see a lot of places uh, not with just the van but uh, you can you can live there in the farms as well but this is like the 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 option to to do travels while you don't have to do senior freelance work to cover all the expensive van and 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 travels and and restaurants and stuff so there is a way how to how you can do it uh on low cost level as well on on the other hand you uh you might go in the the other direction which i'm trying to get there is that you accumulate some uh, some assets and you invest money probably and you try things that can work on its own which it's not the case for freelance jobs or at least for my case because i'm still needed at the computer and i'm still needed at at my email most of the week and to really like detach for several weeks for example uh, that is a challenging thing so that's something that i'm going or looking forward to to find a way how can i do things that can like leave me detach from all the online stuff for 
a week or two or three to re-energize and to rethink what I would like to do because that's that's probably the the downside for me over the uh, over the uh, travel stuff or the, the camping stuff is that I constantly mix pleasure time and work time and I I'm never detached enough from from the work time so I cannot enjoy the moments as much as as if I was uh, on a like vacation where I don't need to think about work at all. So then I have some little photos of, uh, of how it went over the years. This is one of our daughters uh, doing school in, I think it was Greece and it looks like great, but obviously there is uh, a lot of sun during the day. So this with the writing would work, but for me, the work cannot happen outside looking at the sea or enjoying the beach because you cannot see the computer screen. So you need your, like most of the time, I'm actually in the van or in the caravan working uh, from inside uh, while the family is uh, doing school uh, outside or enjoying the beach. And I started with like multiple locations in the caravan because the, the, as, as the thing, as the car is made as a vacation, uh, um, tool, it's not really ready for a uh, good place for work. So I tried standing up here next to the uh, double bed, or I even put my uh, chair into the toilet room and converted that place for a working room. I tried to sit on the uh, big bed and work for, from there. And it's like a million of options, but nothing is really like comfortable. But over time, like you sometimes can get out if it's raining and the light is not as as uh, 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 much, or you you over time you find out what is your ideal uh, location to work or uh, or or sitting uh, combination, and we realize that the van might be the the thing, and so we like two years ago we bought a van, and it's really like what all we wanted and, and the combination of small size so it's not 12 meters but six uh, and the the opportunity to work on this table or uh, kids sometimes do uh, online school from the bed uh, in in the back of the van that really like fit into how we want to work and and since that change we are super happy so so do, if if you want to think about uh, going camping like we did uh, feel free to ask because like there is a lot of options and a lot of sizes but each of the travelers has uh, his own priorities and sometimes it's more like i want to have luxury and big shower and sometimes it's more like i want to travel to the distant places or to remote places so you need a small car uh, so it, it is good to think through this. And even for the first caravan, I spent like an hour, uh, sorry, a, a year uh, thinking about it because I didn't know how to, how to handle that. And, and even then I did mistakes and, and learned from them over the time. You would definitely need some gadgets and uh, there is a lot I tried and some of the most important ones might be these these four things so headset is important because you uh, like you can detach from the noise uh, from outside way easier than if you in your house go to a different room and and, and close your door so this is this is not as easy in the camper van so the the, the headset is good um, then you would uh, you would uh, look for internet which was a challenge in the beginning like in the first several years it was, but over time it's really like, at least within Europe, it's not, not that difficult. You either have your roaming data or you uh, basically buy a local SIM. And what we have is like a rotor that always stays in the van. You just change the SIM uh, and then all the, all the devices in the van have the internet connection uh, well. So, but there are ways like you can have antenna on your van that just connects to the restaurant Wi-Fi or, or campsite Wi-Fi. And uh, also there, there is a, a application called Wi-Fi Pro that 
has some of the passwords of the location. So you don't even need to go to some of the locations to, to find out what the password is. So this is kind of like a gray area, but you don't like in recent years, you don't really need that as much. Uh, one of the good SIM cards that uh, we found or that my friend found are is a Spanish lobster SIM right now. And it's changing a lot. Like every year there is different offers and, and different options. So just like uh, go search for that. And, and usually the offers are better than within Czech Republic, but the, the there is a lot of options and, and you would not have a problem to get online. And then the backup thing, like uh, make sure that even if your stuff is stolen from the van, you have it somewhere else, like in the cloud or so. Other thing is that you meet a lot of people or at least we, we met a lot of people on the way and we don't really search for that. It's more like, okay, you travel in the van there and we are in the same location. So let's meet and, and spend some time together. And what's, I think it's even obvious, like you meet people that have the similar set of values. So it's really like multiple times we got together to, to chat and have a coffee for the one evening. And it then lasted four days and I didn't do any work because like, it was so fun to, to chat and, and discuss what, how you do this and how you do that, that then uh, it really like, we need to regulate the meetings uh, sometimes because it's like, it, it would be so much fun, but I'm there to, to make the work as well. So, so this is, this is really great. Uh, what I didn't try as much or what I, what didn't work out for me is go to co-working because as we found out the van is good enough for work and I have all my things there and I don't need to bring my bag with external monitor to uh, an unknown place where I don't know how the ergonomics would work out. Uh, this really like, I go to restaurants sometimes to to do emails and little stuff, uh, uh, but uh, the, the van is really like the go-to location if I want to do proper work and if I want to achieve my goals. So. So that's, that's probably quite different to uh, other digital nomads that need to kind of do it in the hotel room or need to do it in the, in the co-working space because there is no other options. I always have the option to, to go back home to my place where I have my coffee, my things, and, and don't need to think about not forget the, the cable for USB or, or things like that. So we, along the way, we met a, a lot of friends and some of them uh, are even our uh, uh, my clients, and and some of them happen to be uh, my partners as well. Uh, and that's the greatest thing. Like you just do the fun stuff, and then you realize thirty percent, fifty percent of your customers also have vans or camper vans, and they also travel and they do similar stuff. So it's kind of like, hey, how how did I achieve that? Like I was writing a little blog some day in the past and now like half of my customers do the same stuff as I do. So that's, that really like makes thing enjoyable. And uh, as Elena, you mentioned like the difficult clients and the, the good clients, I end up actually in the place where all my clients are the great ones. And, and you still have your day full of work. So you need to decide which of the great clients are the least great. And that's kind of like, next level of difficulty for me to to handle so so this this is really like i, I enjoyed along along the along the way uh, here are some of the people i know of that even run big companies and do it from the camper either in us like the hot jar company uh, matt in uh, cobalt or or joel and my friend actually bought a camper van. Amos uh, is a friend that I have a project with. And, and we've been in Spain this year, as I mentioned. And, and he rented the van for a week to try it out. And like a few days ago, a few days after that, like he was absolutely overwhelmed by the, the, the experience that and his wife as well, that we went to a seller and he bought his his van and I was like, man, you are so fast in your decision making. That's great. And and now they like two weeks ago, they went for their first trip because the van needed to be ready. And 
and they kind of like said like we are selling everything like all the companies we have like we are done we will just be camping so this is how fast it sometimes can happen and and even for me it took several years and he did it within one month so so the the we will see how how long it will last and how how much challenges uh, he will uh, see on the way but this is really like i'm so proud of him and and so happy that he made that switch because like he just re renovated his house and now he's leaving the house there and going to some unclean beach and and unreliable roads and and places where he doesn't feel as safe as in his house so this is like i'm super super happy about that so and that that leads us to to the most important thing because like there are many places where you can sleep uh, in your van or, or camper but most of the places might not be as nice as as clean as safe sometimes and so we thought uh, with my friend jacob and alex that there might be a way how uh, how we can like find the best places find the safe places legal places because there is like a lot of apps that collect places like you can sleep here but not always it works out for other uh, campers or not always it works out for situations where more campers find a place and and then flood it with campers uh, especially in spain or portugal this is this is a challenging thing so we thought okay if we find the best places which would have a good uh uh, safety or an owner that's nice we might make a project out of it so this is kind of like the thing that the idea was started with jacob in november in croatia and we refined the idea within the winter and then left for the spain trip in in january and <laughs> and then we launched a landing page got together with some partner and now we are building a site and it, it it grows and it's it's so much fun so i'd like to play you and i don't know if it work would work but i would like to play you like a one minute video about what what the mood of the things might be So this is kind of like an introduction that we put online and then then all the nice things happen and uh, and since that moment it was all, all all fun and we just evolve and and refine the ideas around uh, around the project so i would do a little introduction what what the what the purpose of it is and that's finding the best locations making happy uh all the all the three components of the travels should be should be uh, happier. Uh, camper is one. The owner of the place uh, should be another because he gets uh, uh, the the people that would like to have some luxuries and and uh, quality service. And the community should benefit from that as well because there is uh, a lot of things to improve on that level or or on on that approach because. Uh, as more campers are in Europe uh, and the world, 
uh, the, the nicest places get packed sometimes and not everybody is behaving uh, in the right way. So this is something to, that, that we really need to change and need to educate travelers and, and avoid situations like what happened in January in, in Portugal, where uh, in the southern part, uh, they introduce a law that you cannot even sleep in your car uh, throughout night, which obviously harms the, harms the tourist uh, attractivity uh, of the country, but it's not a, a sustainable solution. So uh, in my eyes, the only way how to make this sustainable is is basically to regulate some of the stuff and to educate people how to do things right, how to not uh, litter and, and those those little things that might seem like, okay, if I'm just there and put uh, uh, my stuff outside, it, it, it's not harming anyone. But if 20 people in the small parking lot do the same, then, then the tricky part happens and then the locals might not be as happy. So... That's that's one of the challenging that uh, that we would like to to fight with, um, and then if we make that, it it would just be uh, a lot of great experience for uh, future campers because, for example, this last year uh, a lot of people tried it for the first time, and and this market is like it's growing since we started, but the last year is really like rocket growth so this would be this would be nice to to be around and and combine the the stuff that i like with with probably some uh, business opportunities these are some of the locations that we found out uh this year uh, some of them are from czech some of them are from spain uh some of them are super nice and we've been like blown away uh, by the owner but uh, some of the other places were not as good. So this is really like a, uh, a challenging part for all, for all the campers to find a good spot quick that that might be a challenge because like you travel and uh, the apps have a lot of options, but not always the photos are good or the descriptions are good. So you might spend hours searching for a spot for the next night and it might uh, become a disaster. So making sure that there is a collection of of good spots which are reliable makes it easier for uh, all the campers that enter the market right now because they don't know where to first where to search for the places and how to distinguish between uh, the good ones and the bad ones so there are some more photos of the of the locations and we also have a map and we try to cover all Europe and then all world. But uh, as we started recently, this is what we have right now. Like we've been to Spain. Uh, we are now, now in Czech with, uh, with my partner and Alex is still in Spain. And we will hopefully meet again like in two, three years and the map would be flooded with pins and great locations to visit. So that, that's the... That's the future we, we are looking forward. And what I like to do from the business side of things is to get together freelancers and compose a team out of freelancers, which uh, might be tricky and might be challenging because sometimes you want to have employees and to on, you want to have the stability, but because uh, we uh, uh, three guys uh, that are partners to Camper Guru, we are all freelancers by trade. We thought, okay, maybe there's other way how we can like combine and make this work throughout Slack, throughout WordPress and other tools and make this work remotely, uh, not having a full-time employee. And it might change, but I would like to uh, challenge myself in this way and to, to fight with the things like motivating the people and, and being able to communicate with the people that travel and that have similar challenges on their ways because most of the team are campers too and things happen. So it's sometimes you need to delay stuff. Sometimes you have troubles with the internet. And as I do it so, so long, it doesn't stress me anymore. And it, it would stress me uh, a lot before, but I think there's a way how we can 
be more focused and and still be able to communicate with other team members and deliver stuff in a way so this is kind of like my personal challenge of is there a way how we can do this do that and how how this can work on on uh, based on freelance uh, even like van life freelance basis so we'll see if, if this works out and to conclude uh, i have some some movies to share with you which which are on the crazier side of things uh, so uh, those are definitely uh, the movies that would tell you okay like you are not crazy enough to to do, it, do this and i am not crazy uh, enough as well but this kind of tells you the bigger picture of things how how far you can take life in a camper van how uh, how far you can be distant from a regular life and and it it both of the movies one of which is surfwise and the other is captain fantastic both of the movies are really like telling you how far you can get and you can obviously choose like 30% of that uh, which i would say would be my choice because uh, that's where i feel comfortable and that's that's how we do stuff even that for some people that live in a house and go to office it might even our life might seem crazy and to our family and and friends it seemed crazy in the beginning uh, but now it turned the opposite way where they are so excited that we travel and they they are always like curious what happened on the travels and and how it went and and so so we basically turn this in an opposite way and we enjoy the life and that's what i suggest for everyone to to think about how to live the life and combine it with work and maybe make some money but still live and enjoy uh, the moments and and find a way that that works out and that that makes you happy and that if you are on the deathbed you feel like okay this was a ride and, and and you're not like thinking about what i would do differently or what i would change in my life now no like like do it now it might be bumpy ride but it definitely pays back over time if you if you survive the first moments or years that's it Thank you.